in my years of ministry and even when I wasn't a pastor, I have felt many times like the literal presence of God in my life. And what I'm about to tell you, you may be surprised by, but the, like on Sunday mornings, yeah, I feel God. And in church, I feel God. But would you believe me if I told you that I feel God so much more when I'm around other believers, when I'm in community, doing life together. Um, I'm not really grading it. I'm just saying that I can feel God working when I'm around my brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I want to encourage you with this devotional today that if you want to be in a close relationship with God, I would be close to his people, being in community. And so I haven't really mentioned church, but I, I will today. But I don't even mean necessarily church on Sunday mornings. What I mean is the church as the body of Christ. There's something amazing about where two or more people are gathered. God is definitely in the midst of them. And uh, this New Testament actually talks about what we call one another's, and there's a lot of them. There's over 40 of them in the Bible. And they go like this. Here's an example of one, Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. When we get together, we can actually inspire each other is what it's saying, like spur one another on, inspire, inspire each other to do good works and good deeds and then encourage one another when we gather. And so whether you do that on church or at church on Sunday mornings or whether you do that in a small group or just coffee with one person, there's supposed to be this quality time where you inspire and encourage each other to do what God has called you to do. That's why you grow closer to God because someone's there to, in a sense, inspire you or hold you accountable to living out the word of God. And then Galatians 6.2 says, bear one another's burdens. Or James 5.16 says, pray for one another. Or 1 Peter 4.9 says, be hospitable. So if someone's in need or needs food or a place to stay, be hospitable. Now here's the thing, how do you apply all these one another's if you don't get around other people? If you're not together with other people, how can you actually apply a ton of scripture in the Bible and, and obey it? So if you really wanna grow closer to God, get close in biblical community. And for me, I love leading groups. I run a couple groups myself. And I'm telling you, I feel the presence of God. I see God working in ways that I don't always see on Sunday mornings. Um, and I think they're both equal, equally powerful. But there's something about when someone comes up to you and says an encouraging word or gives you a scripture and tells you that God put it on their hearts, heart for you. And you're like, wow, I needed that. Like sometimes that just doesn't happen on Sunday because there's not that, that kind of time in a church service. So I want to show you one of my favorite scriptures about this, Acts 2, 42 through 47. And you're going to see just how much they must have grown as I read it. So check this out. It says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So it would be like preaching and teaching, to fellowship, to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. So we read right there that they, they hung out together uh, for teaching of the Bible, for fellowship. So maybe they were having some fun and hanging out, talking together, uh, singing together, prayer, uh, communion, and even eating meals together. And then it says this in verse 43, a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people, and each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a really close-knit community. But at the same time, what you see there is, is God was showing up in miraculous, powerful ways. They were there for each other, and they were growing. And it was so powerful that God was adding new people to the community. More and more people were coming into that community. 
uh, because it was attractive, it was, it was life-changing for people. And here's the reality. Um, really, who you surround yourself with makes a difference. To surround yourself with people who are also hungry for more of God and obeying the Word of God is just going to reinforce spiritual growth and closeness to God. When someone's close to God and then they come into a community of believers or a small group or into your life, their life, it makes an impact on you. It, it rubs off on you. It, 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 there's just something about it where it influences and inspires you to also go after God more and be even more hungry for Him. So that's what was happening. And that's why we grow closer to God when we live in community. So here's what I would do. Okay, here's a few action steps. Go beyond Sunday services. And maybe right away after church, go out to eat with someone. Sit across the table from each other. Hear each other's lives and pray and encourage one another. Um, get to know each other. That's, that's one easy way, leaving Sunday church services to, to getting with other people and be able to inspire and encourage them with what God's doing in your life. Uh, find someone you can pray and read the Bible with. I know we, I've already said that before in the last devotional, but the same thing here. Find someone that you can pray and read the Bible with, that you can encourage each other. Find someone who will hold you uh, and you can hold them accountable to worshiping God every day, to living for Him and obeying His Word. And then lastly, if you don't like doing the one-on-one -on -one or a couple people, maybe there's a small group you can join in church that would help you be in a community where other people are there for the same reason. They want to be known and know others and they want to know God and know more about Him. And so that hunger is going to help you as well grow closer to God. So I hope that this helps because you may not have thought that being close to God uh, could be found by being close in community with other believers, but it's true. And this is our last devotional. So let me leave you with this. If you've put your faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, um, keep following him. Keep following him. You are close to God, and he dwells in your life through his Holy Spirit. Be aware of this real and close relationship that you have with God. Uh, be aware that he loves you and that you can love him. Follow Jesus and do whatever he wants to do. Do whatever Jesus would do in this life. Along the journey, make sure you keep solid believers around you. Make sure you surround yourself with other people who are, are also following Jesus. And I'm telling you, um, you're not just going to feel close. You're, you are going to be close to God. And you're going to live a life very fulfilling and experiencing more of God. So I pray this devotional series helps you in ways that maybe even I didn't expect. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you that you are close to us. And there are many things we can do to help foster that relationship. But nothing ever is going to change the fact that you love us. And by your spirit, you live with us. You are here for us. So help us to be aware of your presence in our lives. And Lord, we will do the things to be close to you. We will do the things to keep um, an awareness of, of your relationship with us, like reading the Bible and praying and worshiping you and following Jesus and being in the church community and surrounded by other followers of Christ. We will do those things to remain strong and to remain close to you. We thank you that you thought it would be worth that you would thought that we are worthy to even be around and to be close with us. So we thank you for that. We praise you and we commit to living a close relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen.